So many times when you hear people describe Lamar Jackson, they'll say, oh, he's so athletic. Oh, he's so dynamic. Oh, he's so fast. Oh, he can make all these people miss in the open field or even in a not so open field. And those are all great qualities of Lamar Jackson. But too many times in conversations, that's where people stop at. And with Lamar Jackson, he's not talked about as a passer. He's not talked about as a thrower of the football enough. But today, in this very, very special video, we decided to take that conversation a step further and give him the credit that he deserves as a thrower of the football because that is something with him that seems to still, by so many, be both overlooked and underrated. But I brought on a very special guest so he can help break it down and, and try to find the reason why people are sleeping on Lamar Jackson as a thrower. And he's going to do a little bit of waking up. So stand up. Let's huddle it up and let's talk about it. Ain't you know just what I mean. What I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. Got to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave it. Right and grave it. YouTube, Team Keep It Clean. Uh, very, very special guest Shout in the building. Uh, my guy, Jason, from Huddle It Up Films. Uh, before we get into things and start breaking all of this down, let everybody know exactly where they can find you at and exactly what it is that you do. Sure, you can find me on Huddle It Up Films right here on YouTube or on Twitter if you want to follow me and uh, comment, go back and forth with me. And basically, I do film cut-ups, a lot of film cut-ups from mm -hmm. the Go State. And uh, just specific players. And this month in Graven is a big month for me, actually. I'm, it's a good time to have me on because every single day for the next 30, 40 days, I'm going to be mm -hmm. releasing a video on one player. So, um, you know, it's a busy time on my channel. Yeah. Busy and usual. Oh, that's, that's a lot of work, too. Um, so what, what made you even want to dive into YouTube in the first place? I know you've been doing it for a little bit, but what made you want to get into it? I started in uh, the you know, middle of the pandemic, I guess, in 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was fans of yours. I've told you that before, but also Coach Evans sipped a tally. Shout and, out to Coach. Uh, you can check out Coach, man. Love Coach to death. And uh, also mm -hmm. uh, Edgar Allen. He uh, did Edgar some great yeah. rounds as well. So mm -hmm. I wanted to do something different, though, uh, because, you know, Coach does a lot of in-depth breakdowns. You do what you do every single day, working hard. Edgar Allen does film breakdowns. So mm -hmm. what I wanted to do was more of like player cut-ups. So yeah. you can see the patterns and, and I love the, the little community we have over there. I got a couple of thousand followers now mm -hmm. and you'd be surprised in Graven what they notice. The video could be about one player and they'll be noticing what another player is doing well or what another yeah. player is not doing well. And the things that you can pick up by seeing something repeated over and over again. So, you know, if you want to say, I always say football is family, join the family, watch a couple of cut ups. If you want to support mm -hmm. the channel, just like, uh, subscribe, put a comment in there. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. And um, all the links to his Twitter, his YouTube, that's going to be down below in the description just so we can make it easy for everybody. Now, the topic at hand is one that has been talked about and discussed a lot. And people have the very different views on Lamar Jackson as a businessman. they are very different views on Lamar Jackson as a quarterback uh, and very different views on Lamar Jackson as a pastor. Um, but and you uh, just recently and we'll have that video linked in the description as well. You did a video on the top 25 throws uh, from this season uh, from Lamar Jackson. Um, and me and you talked off air um, and you brought up how you feel like Lamar Jackson actually doesn't get enough credit as a pure passer, as a thrower of the football. Why do you feel that way? It's funny, Graven, because I found myself commenting more and more on Twitter because I just don't see people going to bat for him. And generally, I'm, I'm pretty quiet. You know, I'll, I'll get on Twitter, tweet a couple every, you know, a couple times every day, mm -hmm. just to keep engaged. But you know, when I look at the people who even cover the team and guys that f study film like I do, I just I don't hear it enough at how good of a passer he is. Mm -hmm. So, as somebody who's seen every throw of his since he's come in multiple times, broken it down, the good, the bad, and everything else. When it just comes to a thrower of the football, a pure passer, Engraven, he's he's one of the best in the league. Mm. Okay, and, and what what makes you say that? Well, there's not a throw he can't make. I mean, and we've seen him make them, but um, you're talking about 
the deep ball. He'll hit the deep ball. You're talking about from, you know, big uh, outside the numbers was a big talking point going into 2020, 2021. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. I think he improved his fundamentals on that, got behind the ball a little more and started driving it, got his base set. Uh, so he's improved on that. You look at the off balance, uh, off platform throws. I mean, think about oh, the tight yeah. uh, touchdown to marking uh, Mark Andrews in, uh, in new England where he was off balance being rushed. We've seen that a throw against the Browns where Clowney was pushing him out of bounds, all mm-hmm. the off platform stuff, the arm angles where he can, you know, slide the ball around his offensive lineman and underneath the defense's hands. Um, you name it, he can do it. He does it at a high level and it's every single game. And I think, even as Ravens fans, we get caught up in his athleticism and his ability as a runner mm-hmm. where you think to yourself, well, he's, you know, you think of him as a runner running quarterback, but when you look around the league in grave and think about it, go through the quarterbacks in your head, every division, every division in the league, you know, Lamar's one of the best, just from a pure passing standpoint, you make it, you see him make throws that only a handful of quarterbacks can make. Mm. Uh, and why do you think there've been a lot of people that have been just so hung up on, him as a thrower, but saying that he can't make all the throws. I don't know. I, I, you know, I think it goes back to what I was saying about he's so dynamic with the ball in his hands as a runner Mm -hmm. that, and we've seen it over the years in grave. And if somebody's really good, great at something, it usually means that they're not as good as other, at other things. Mm -hmm. Otherwise they'd be one of the best. And I think, you know, people had a hard time with the injury thing and, you know, what happened to RG three, I think was stuck in people's head. Um, but, but yeah, I think that they sleep on Lamar as a, as a, uh, as a thrower. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, quite honestly, you know, I want to give credit to Greg Roman, thank Greg Roman for what he did for this team. I mean, it was so much fun and grave and studying the greatest rushing team in <laughs> Ravens history. I yeah. mean, it was, it was crazy what he had Lyman doing and turning Bradley Bozeman into a great player and all the stuff Greg Roman did. But mm-hmm. as a passer, um, if I could quote my friend Co- Kodak Black, I would say, um, you know, you want me to take my time with you. Maybe I'm not your speed. And there became to a point where Lamar was just not the speed with Greg Roman. Lamar is best in up-tempo engraving. We've seen it. Spread mm-hmm. it out, off-tempo. Mm-hmm. Let Lamar control the field. Mm-hmm. Short shot, short shot, scramble, deep shot. That's the kind of rhythm Lamar needs to be in and not this, like, micromanaged style. So I think without Greg Roman, whether it be here or mm. forbid another team, you're yeah. going to see Lamar get his credit as a passer soon enough. And that's something that I'm, I'm really looking forward to have actually been looking forward to it for a while. Uh, and like you said, shout out to Giro um, for making the Ravens, uh, helping the Ravens be one of the most historic uh, Russian offenses ever. Um, Giro played his part in that. Obviously Lamar was a huge part of that. Mark Ingram, uh, Gus Edwards too. Uh, and they, they did their thing uh, and they've done their thing rushing wise over the years, but passing wise, it's just been, limited it's just been a lack and one of the things that i'm most excited to see when it comes to lamar jackson um and like you mentioned whether it's with the ravens or unfortunately if it ends up being somewhere else but i'm excited to see him be let loose be let free and, and really uh be able to show the world consistently um how good he can be because i just feel like we we just haven't got to see it yet on a consistent basis and I feel like a lot of it is just with the way that the offense was designed um, with with wide receivers. We know wide receivers aren't really featured much in the offense and just really the passing game as a whole. Uh, it's not the primary focus uh, of the offense. It's been the running game. Uh, so the with the passing game, the opportunities are just so limited. And I think that's played a part. Uh, and how a lot of people feel about Lamar Jackson as a passer. Uh, if he's not, if he's not out there, and not, if and, and every pass isn't perfect, it's tough because there's so few opportunities. It, it's hard to get into a rhythm. It, it, it's hard to get everything going when it's either all or nothing uh, with the type of offense, the type of passing offense that the Ravens have had um, in the past. But hopefully, in the future, with whoever the offensive coordinator ends up being. Uh, and just the Ravens philosophy as a whole, I, I hope they can move forward uh, and not stay the same or even go backwards. So we'll see how it goes. But as far as the offense, what type of offense do you feel Lamar Jackson would be best in? Well, I think that the great thing about Lamar is I, I, I refer to him as one of those quarterbacks who's system independent, which mm. means it doesn't matter what system you put him in. He can do 
what's asked for him. We've seen quarterbacks like uh, Jared Goff and even Baker Mayfield. They need that Shanahan, um, you know, Stefanski West Coast offense where it runs a lot of outside zone. I don't want to get too technical, but it basically makes things easier for the quarterback. With Lamar, he can throw in rhythm. He can throw deep. We saw him take I mean, he led the league in air yards per attempt before he got injured last year, 2021, while his completion percentage was higher than the year before. That's that's unheard of. I mean, that, how you lead the league in air yards per attempt, but your completion percentage keeps going up and up. So mm-hmm. with Lamar, I think he's system independent. To me, I'm not really hung up on what kind of uh, you know offense it is, mm-hmm. but um, I think because he, I think he can thrive in any system. Mm. Okay, that's a really good point. Um, Now, another thing, too, when it's come to Lamar Jackson, one of the things I'm excited, and and I hope we get to see it, again, hopefully it's with the Ravens. Unfortunately, it could be with somebody else. But I I really want to see Lamar Jackson not only be let loose, um, but him be let loose with some really good pieces around him. Um, Because that's something where, that's an area where the Ravens haven't been the best at, uh, is when it's come to complimentary pieces around him. Obviously, he's had Mark Andrews uh, in his career, his entire career. Um, but that's probably been, yeah, that's probably been the guy he's had around uh, the longest, really. Uh, so it makes sense why he loves Mark Andrews so much, and he really trusts Mark Andrews so much. But I, I would really love to see Lamar uh, with some guys that he can have that big trust for. That's a word that we really haven't heard much this year, big trust. Um, so. What, what what type of receivers do you feel like Lamar could have or should have or would really benefit from moving forward, whether it be with the Ravens or somewhere else? Well, you know, I want to say that I do believe that uh, it it's a 50-50 at this point um, as far as, you know, the, the tags are hanging over his head. I don't want yeah. to give my opinion on this, if you don't mind. I don't, oh, see, Lamar, I don't see Lamar playing on the tag uh, mm-hmm. in Graydon. I, don't I think that the way the Ravens do business – you know, we've seen it with Hurst and Zeus and even throughout the years. When a player wants out, you don't want a disgruntled player that you're paying, you know, 40 some million, 45 million, mm-hmm. I think is the exclusive tag. Look, you trade them while the trading's good and you, you just bite the bullet and do it. And they'd like to do right by their players anyway. So I don't say, I think it's going to be either he signed long term or he's traded. But mm-hmm. you're right about the receivers. I mean, um, those who followed me would know last year I was, I was talking about that. Uh, getting rid of Hollywood was was no good for Lamar because really we saw Mark Andrews and Graven. He was lined up at X receiver. He was lined up by himself on the sideline a lot last year yeah. because there was no explosiveness. Um, and mm. it's just really, really hard. You think about, you know, the tight windows that you had to hit Hollywood in, you know, mm-hmm. for as good as Hollywood is as a route runner, if you sailed the ball a little bit, uh, it got him in trouble. So mm-hmm. what I would like to see from Graven is Lamar, uh, here with the Ravens, obviously, bring in a receiver like DeAndre Hopkins, like Mike Evans. Uh, okay. Those are two receivers. Trade, get get the best you can. You're going to get an offense that is more receiver centric. And the Ravens, for whatever reason, in Graven, I can think of offensive linemen, all kinds of players on the defensive side of the ball, mm-hmm. tight ends. Where we're getting them in Graven in the fourth round, the sixth round, undrafted. They come in, they earn their contract, they go somewhere else. The one area Gus was undrafted, uh, you know, at a running back. The one mm-hmm. position that that we haven't is receiver. Mm-hmm. So this is a time where, yeah, you got to trust your scout, and you can't just give up on drafting receivers. You still have to draft them. But Lamar needs a veteran in here, and I want to see a bigger target of an experienced mm-hmm. target, somebody that he can depend on. Right. Um, really take some pressure off of Andrews, and I think that you'll see a better season from Andrews if that happens. Ah, yeah, Andrews could feed off of that and feast off of that as well. Now, um, with Lamar Jackson, talked about him being underrated um, as a passer. Now, as a passer, what are some of the things that he can improve on, in your opinion? Yeah, I think think, that's a great question because no player is perfect. And I think that with Lamar, two things, I think it's two things. I think, number one, he gets locked in on Mark Andrews too much and will stay locked in. You'll see him go through a progression, look to one, look to two, it's Andrews. And then instead of going to three, he'll wait He'll wait for Mark to clear another window and try to force it into him. And I think that when fans were talking about him holding the ball too much, mm. that was a product engraving of him staring down Mark Andrews. And guess who else is staring down Mark Andrews? The opposing defenses. They know where it's going. Hey, He's yeah. being bracketed, all kinds of stuff. So 
that's a deadly combination. And, you know, mm-hmm. just to go back to the point of the receivers, I think that that can fix it because we saw what happened early last year when Bateman was healthy. Mm-hmm. This offense, what was Lamar, like 10 touchdowns, one at pick after three weeks, something ridiculous like that. As soon as Bateman went down, the production in the passing game went down. Mm-hmm. And that's spelled doom for the season. So um, yeah. you know, I think he really does have to clean up. You know, he had eyes for Hollywood, too. But when Hollywood went away, it was all Mark Andrews. And I think it that really messes him up, getting stuck on Mark Andrews. But, again, I think it's fixable. If you get him other weapons, especially yeah. a guy like Hopkins or Mike Evans, this is why I'm saying get a name. You can't have an offense and ignore DeAndre Hopkins and Mike Evans. They will get the ball. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's true. So I, I appreciate you coming on and, and breaking it down so thoroughly like you did, uh, giving us plenty of examples uh, of everything that you mentioned uh, when it comes to Lamar Jackson uh, as a quarterback, when it comes to Lamar Jackson as a thrower of the football. And hopefully moving forward, uh, he continues to get even more respect uh, as a thrower because he certainly earned it um, already. But it's I hope the world really – Put some respect on Lamar Jackson's name. But again, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, and, and, and again, I don't think anybody thinks he's a bad thrower at this oh, point. Oh, there's, there's, there's some people that do because we, we, we still hear it even after year five. We but still yeah, hear well, I, hey, okay. Yeah, I, I, I believe you. You have a, get a lot of comments on this channel, but I, I think that he doesn't get credit for being an elite thrower of the football. Mm. Like you look at the guys, like, okay, Mahomes has earned the crown. It's his. I mm-hmm. you give him all the credit. But you go to Josh Allen, he has his issues, inconsistencies. Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, look at his fourth quarter rating. Um, you know, you've seen what Lamar can do with a bad offensive line. You've seen what Lamar can do with a lack of weapons. Mm-hmm. And again, look around the league. This is an elite thrower of the football. Something else I want to throw in real quick before we end. Mm-hmm. One is accuracy in Graven. How many times have you seen him run a receiver into a headache? Oh, maybe like never. Because he don't set his receivers up. Right. He sees the field really, really well, and he will place the ball. And uh, there are times on camera, because I'm getting the end zone view too, Mm -hmm. where as soon as the ball hits the receiver's hands, it's almost like equidistant from the two defenders closing Mm -hmm. on him. He's not leading him into, uh, into, into contact, into headaches. So there's so much, uh, you know, I could, we could do an hour video on it. That's how much I go to bat for Lamar. And I wish he was given more credit for it. I think we'll see it though. Hopefully here in Baltimore, new receivers, new OC. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. And uh, so, Jason, appreciate you coming on, man. One more time as we get out of here, let everybody know where they can find you at. Yeah, Huddle It Up Films. Uh, Grave has said the links below. So click on that. Find a player that you're interested in. I have videos on just about every player, one video per, te- per day until we're finished with all the players, and then it'll be draft season on the channel. I have some good guests over there to talk some football as well. So, uh, But I really appreciate and always love talking football with you and Grave, and you know oh, Yeah, man. for sure, man. I appreciate you coming on. So, team, keep it clean. Make sure you check out all his stuff down below in the description, and we out. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan, and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two, team, keep it clean. Shout out to Graven.